Good afternoon, my beautiful people from L.A. and beyond. Welcome to City of Angels Podcast, Episode 2, with yours truly, DTLF. Uh, and man, do we have some interesting topics of news to discuss this morning. Um, you know, so Tyron Lu declining the Lakers as of yesterday. Kyrie Irving uh, exiting Boston, perhaps for the final time. And are the Lakers forcing a LeBron trade request? Those are just a couple of topics I want to touch on, but let's start off with LeBron. Stephen A. and other sources are reporting that people close to Jeannie Buss are advising her to trade LeBron. Sounds to me like the Lakers might be hoping for LeBron to ask for a trade by not hiring Ty Lu and probably not taking him into consideration when making any front office decisions. Matter of fact, I think the Lakers don't have a relationship with LeBron since Magic stepped down. Um, <clears throat> I gotta tell you guys, man, this is really bothering me the way we're running the front office. Um... You know, I'm, I'm going to let you guys know how I would do it differently if it was in my hands. But for now, uh, you know, probably with this front office, uh, we are very much in disarray. I hate to say it, but we are. And you guys know I like to stay positive, but I, I haven't been able to do that since, uh, the, you know, since the summer began for us. Since, you know, we should be in the playoffs technically with the roster we had, but... Uh, with all the injuries and poor coaching and bad front office decisions, we miss. So, But the thing that really bothers me is that by not hiring a president of basketball operations, we are showing everyone just exactly how dysfunctional we are. What's worse is that there is still some confused Laker fans saying, this is a good thing. Saying, trade LeBron. He is the problem. Saying stuff like that. It just completely throws me off because, well, to those people, I say, what do you think happens when we trade LeBron? We won't get the maximum return for a 35-year-old aging star. We won't look attractive to other free agents, especially with no LeBron. And we will be in the lottery for God knows how many years. Um, I don't want that to happen, personally. I prefer LeBron James staying, fixing everything, and hopefully adding other pieces. Uh, I know a lot of you guys don't like LeBron, but you got to put your personal feelings to the side and think what's better for the franchise. <clears throat> now I want to talk about Kyrie. With his uh, exit from Boston imminent, there were reports of him coming to play with LeBron. Multiple people close to him are saying it's a done deal. I've been on Twitter and that Cuffs Legends guy who reported LeBron was coming to the Lakers, uh, who was a good, good, close friend to LeBron James, probably knows some insider information, You know, has teased Kyrie Irving coming to the Lakers as of yesterday. He said it's a done deal, and he tweeted out a tweet with Kyrie Irving um, you know, in a Laker uniform next to LeBron. Um, if you guys don't follow me, follow me on Twitter, go ahead and do that. Uh, at Dan the Lakers fan, I retweeted this tweet, so if you guys want to find it, there it is. Um, but <clears throat> you know, one thing I want to say is that if we get rid of LeBron, that's not happening. You know, you can kiss that goodbye. So instead of having two stars, we might end up having none. That's right, zero stars. And reports of Kawhi being recruited by LeBron, we can kiss that goodbye. If you guys already haven't heard, apparently LeBron was at, I'm not sure if it was game one in the Toronto versus Philly series, but he was recruiting Kyrie, uh, I'm sorry, Kawhi Leonard. So that that's pretty much all out the window if LeBron James exits the Lakers. And what's worse is going to make us look even more unstable than we already are. The only good thing that I might say, actually a great thing about all this, is that more than likely the young core is safe. And regardless of any drama, they still have a bright future with the Lakers moving forward. So that's the only thing I could feel about as far as the Lakers right now. But um, I'm going to pause the segment really quick and head over to Twitter. You guys gave me some questions for the podcast, so I want to go ahead and answer those right now. Starting with I Bleed Purple and Gold, he asks, What now for the Lakers? These, these rumors to trade LeBron, if they do that, free agents will not trust us and won't want to sign with us. Front office is a mess. I'm starting to worry. Things will just get worse. You know what? Uh, I bleed purple and gold. Let me tell you something. You are absolutely validated in your concerns. Um, you're 100% right. If LeBron is traded, we are going to look like a cancer landing destination. And what's worse is that everybody buying all the media hype about the Clippers and how much of a great franchise they are right now, if they buy those wolf tickets and free agents actually believe that garbage, they, they might end up looking over there. So... That would be a worst case scenario for Laker fans and for the franchise. And uh, let's just hope that doesn't happen. But I will touch on that a little bit later in the podcast uh, to complete your your uh, your question. 
And Nathan Allen asks on Twitter, not that I want to trade LeBron because I really don't, but if they decide to, what would you expect to get in return for him? Wow. Again, another question I'm hoping to answer by the end of my podcast, but let me tell you, I'm going to give you just a little smidget. If we do trade LeBron, we're not going to get maximum value in return. Uh, the best case scenario would be getting an up, up and coming young piece and potentially a draft pick or trading them to a team that feels like they're one piece away and they can actually dangle one of their young stars. So I'm going to get a little bit more into that again at the end of the segment, but I have something important to tell you guys as far as trading LeBron and what we we could get potentially now. You got to have an open mind because, um, you know, I'm going to throw, it's, it's going to be one of my hot takes. So I'm going to throw that out there. But thanks for the question. Um, now let's go to Kicking, right? Kicking on Twitter. He said, uh, did you see Max Kellerman say that Kawhi is more clutch than Kobe? How do you feel about this? Man, you know what? Kicking somebody asked me that yesterday. And uh, I'm not upset at Max. I'm actually... The only thing is that it makes me take him, his uh, basketball credibility a lot, like very, very lightly. You know, I, I respect him a lot less after what he said, simply because, I mean, Jay Williams was there and Stephen A, and they totally trashed his remarks as they should, and he, he really didn't have a strong argument. I mean, when Jay Williams asked him, what are these moments you're talking about, you know, that Kawhi has had, um, and Max really couldn't come up with an answer. He was kind of mum on the whole situation so yeah pretty much um what max kellerman says for me as well as stephen a but at least stephen a more times than not will actually speak <clears throat> on the right matter right he'll he'll actually come out saying the right thing even though his emotions can get involved as well so yeah max kellerman i i got a question for max what are you smoking max you know that's the only thing i would i would ask max kellerman and hopefully he gets his uh <laughs> Basketball card back because it was revoked as of yesterday. Chicken Master on Twitter asks, would you consider keeping Alex Caruso and Jonathan Williams? Absolutely. Absolutely. But we have to hire a president of basketball ops to make those decisions. Right now we are in limbo because Kurt Rambis and Linda Rambis are running the team behind the scenes. So that's horrible. The Lakers Throne asks, and I like this question. He said, what's your favorite go-to food truck and why? Let me tell you something, man. The Lakers throne. Uh, <clears throat> back when I was living in L.A., uh, I wasn't working. I was a kid. So I really didn't get to experience too many food trucks. But the ones that I did, I love them all, man. If you guys are ever in town, you guys are ever uh, down there in L.A. And, and you decide to eat from a food truck, man, enjoy yourself. Because they sell a lot of delicious food. And I, I imagine it comes really in the clutch when you're hungry and you're getting off of work. And you see that food truck right there outside of your job. Um, my brothers, however, they always used to eat from food trucks whenever it was that they didn't pack their lunch or my mom didn't pack them their lunch. So yeah, you know, that food truck scene in LA is big and heavy and, uh, I got to thank all the food truck people, man, cause they, they truly come through in the clutch. But, uh, I, I, I to answer your question, I have to say, I love them all. <clears throat> Jay Brass says, how can the Lakers fans see the light at the end of the tunnel? It seems like ownership is oblivious to the real world. Uh, that's a good way of putting it, Brass. Let me tell you something, bro. Um, the Lakers have not seen the light at the end of the tunnel in a while. We thought we had a little glimmer of hope when we landed LeBron. But with all of this chaos that has been the front office, Magic stepping down, you know, the trade rumors being leaked, and now all this fiasco going on early this summer, um, you know, it's hard to see a light at the end of the tunnel. However, as Laker fans, you know, we always have to keep in mind that we are spoiled. We have seen glory. And we have to hold on to those glory years for dear life, man, to to, to get us through the, these tough, rough patches in time, right? But we will get through it, man, together. That's why we have this platform here to share. And uh, hopefully, you know, we get out of it sooner than later. A couple more questions before I get back to the podcast. After the Lakers struck out on Ty Lu, who would you want as a Lakers coach moving forward? Uh, I've been on the record. Jared, let me tell you something, bro. I've been on the record saying I really want... Mark Jackson, I feel like he's perfect for the job, but the way the front office is operating, honestly, I don't know what head coach would want to take this job at the moment with no president of basketball operations, so that's kind of irrelevant for now, but thank you so much for the question. Jonathan Sofell, he says, uh, what's up, Jonathan, how you doing? He says, should the Lakers trade all the young assets for Anthony Davis? Absolutely not, and I, was, I will tell you why. 
That would be the worst mistake we can make, especially the way the front office is going right now. Because you trade for Anthony Davis, and you still fall short right of the title because you still need good role players. I don't trust this front office right now to make any good moves. We're going to have to be working with a tight budget if we trade for AD. And for them to be able to make sneaky deals and get good role players to get us over the top to win a championship, I'm just not sure if they're qualified to do that right now. So to hit a grand slam trade and have to give up all the assets like that for a superstar like Anthony Davis to pair up with LeBron sounds ideal on paper. But remember, there's a lot of moving parts to that. And honestly, I wouldn't like to give up the young core, especially knowing that they could be the only uh, bright thing in our future moving forward, potentially with no LeBron. So yeah, to answer your question, I say no. And the last question on Twitter, Johnny Lum says, now that we're hearing the name Frank Vogel, can you support that? Can I support Frank Vogel? I will support any head coach that comes to the Lakers. Um, you guys know I'm very supportive when it comes to whoever's there at the helm. Uh, you know, whether it was Luke Walton when he, when he was there, even though he lost my support towards the end, or if it's Frank Vogel or, or whoever, even if it's John uh, Hollins or, or anybody, whoever joins the Lakers, I will support them. However, again, they have to watch their back because if we hire a coach before we hire a president of basketball operations, they're always going to be worried about, you know, would I have been that president of basketball operations his first choice? Or, you know, is he going to change his mind when he comes in? And, you know, so that's always a complicated situation right now. And that's actually going to segue, you know, into my next topic, which is how the Lakers should proceed from today moving forward. Now, this is something I've been wanting to answer for you guys, how I would run the Lakers if I was them right now. And I'm sure a lot of you guys want to hear this because you, you probably agree with me. But the first, the very first move I would make currently right now from this day forward is I would put my pride and ego to the side and I would call up Jerry West and offer him a stake in ownership, a piece, whatever it takes for him to take that president of basketball ops. Jerry West is one man that I trust to fix the Lakers immediately as soon as he steps in, you know, and uh, I think he could be our savior. So whatever it takes, I would definitely give him a, a piece of ownership, anything. Whatever it takes to get this man to walk through that door and, and hopefully help the Lakers rebuild. But that would be my number one move. After that, <clears throat> if he declines, I would move down the list, you know, to, towards the next best candidate available, which is Messiah Ujiri or Bob Myers or somebody like that. I would not stop till I hire the best candidate available that wants to take the job. But that has to be the priority, not coach first, you know, uh, we have to make sure that we do that first. Hire PBO first. And because no coach wants to work for a front office with no direction, let's be honest. <clears throat> then after that, I would have the president of basketball operation, who, whoever it is that we hired, I would have them help hire the coach, not Kurt Rambis and Linda Rambis. That's the absolute worst case scenario. We don't need to have those two, you know, running up a muck in the front office. So whoever we hire... As a PBO, I would definitely have them help me hire a head coach. That way the coach feels comfortable about the direction we're moving together as a unit. Because right now, it seems like we're in disarray all over the place. After that, after we hire the president of basketball operations first, then the coach, then I would swing for the fences and free agency. Right? I would try to get the best available free agent starting from Kawhi moving on down. If then we can't recruit anyone with LeBron on the roster, then as a final resource, then I would have a sit down with LeBron and Rich Paul, his agent. Then we could see where we could, you know, move him to get max value in return and have him happy as well because we at least owe him that. We're not going to move him to the Phoenix Suns, even though they have a lot of assets because he was not going to be happy there. And of course, Phoenix wouldn't pull that trade knowing that they'd have a disgruntled start. So we have to be logical. And here's where my hot take is, guys. Here's where my hot take is. My theory is that Philly would try to trade for LeBron James. They are right over the hump. If they can't get if they can't get past this round, I think they're going to swing for the fences and try to get that other superstar to put them over the top. And my theory is, again, this is a hot take, that Philly would offer either or Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, whoever they choose to give up. 
they can't keep them both together. Both of those players don't operate well together. First of all, if I'm Philly, I'd rather keep Joel and B. However, his injuries are a question mark. You know, um, every time they get deep in the playoffs, he gets injured or he's sick. His health is definitely a concern for that franchise. So if they want to move him and pair up the two buddy buddies that are Ben Simmons and LeBron, honestly, I don't see how that would work. Um, but yeah, that's an option. I would definitely take Joel Embiid onto the Lakers with open arms. But that's not likely. If I'm Philly, I'm giving up Ben Simmons. Why? Because he can't shoot, and I don't think he ever will learn to shoot. Um, I would give up Ben Simmons. He's a young asset. He's an up-and-coming star. I think he's a bit overrated. However, if you're the Lakers, beggars can't be choosers. If you have to trade LeBron via request, you can't really get too picky. I mean, what else are you going to get in return in a trade package that's better than Ben Simmons and potentially a late first-round pick? So, yes, I definitely would make that move, and I think Philly would make that move. Ben Simmons for LeBron straight up. Maybe they throw in a couple of expiring deals just to make the, the contracts work, but um, that's something if they want to take that next level and stop trusting the process, I think that's something they would have to do to try to win a championship for sure, especially because the East still doesn't have a dominant team. They have a bunch of good to great teams, but no team is dominating like the Cavs were when LeBron was there. So if they can somehow become a powerhouse, I believe Philly has to make that move. Now, the final topic I want to touch on, guys, is, of course, what happened yesterday with the KD injury and what that means for the Warriors in the playoffs. Are the Warriors still the favorite? Well, personally, for me, the Warriors haven't been the favorites in a while because of their chemistry. That's number one. Number two is that if KD is injured, they're definitely not going to get past whoever's next in the, in the next round. If, whether it's Portland or Denver, I think those teams are they play with a lot more heart and passion than Golden State does. And I think they'll get past them. So pretty much I believe that Golden State's run is over. I believe that before Kevin Durant got injured because of their chemistry. And I believe... That still now am I underestimating Curry and Clay? Maybe, but they haven't shown me much in the playoffs where I could say, well, you know, they could step up in the absence of Kevin Durant and Clay. Yes, they had a good game yesterday. They beat the Rockets, but to me, that was more of a missed opportunity from the Houston Rockets than it was for the Warriors. <clears throat> so I will say this, guys. Final thoughts before I get off is that this could be a major player in free agency depending on the severity of Kevin Durant. If Kevin Durant is really, really injured, then will that impact free agents? Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of free agents wait for the dominoes to fall, Kevin Durant and Kawhi being the first ones to go probably. And a lot of free agents will wait to see where the power balance has shifted. However, if, if KD is injured, people will still want him. Make no mistake, right? People will still want him, but will this impact his decision? Will he take another one-year deal with the Warriors potentially? Who knows? Kevin Durant is so unpredictable. But my final thoughts is it's going to be interesting still. Even with all the <clears throat> all the mayhem going on with the Lakers, this summer is still very interesting. And like I said, if I was running the Lakers, we have to make sure that we operate in the right sequence. Um, not in reverse, right? Not coach first, then PBO. First president of Basso Operations, and then move on down the line. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in to today's podcast, guys. This was episode two. Um, you know, this is Thursday, so I won't do another podcast till next Tuesday because that's uh, my day off. So I, I will be doing this Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tell me what you guys think of the podcast. Also, if you guys already haven't heard, me and, uh, me and Yesenia dropped a track called Storytime. Now, it's, it's pretty explicit, so uh, make sure you're over 18 if you listen to it. But please drop a like and check that out. I truly appreciate you guys' support, man. And uh, thank you so much for everything. Again, uh, if I missed any of you guys' questions, you'll have a shot. I'll be going live as soon as something breaks. You'll have a shot at asking me again. If not, you can leave it in the comment section, and I'll do my best to answer that. Please don't forget to hit the like button on the video and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.